Okay, finally. Um, it's guillotines today. Um, and similar to the Kimura class I did on, when was it, uh, Tuesday? We're gonna pretty much start from the end because um, what I see a lot of failed guillotines and um, that kind of led to guillotines being regarded as a strongman move. They're not. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple of misconceptions about the guillotine during the class. Um, and my, my idea is to teach the method of guillotine, um, especially of hand and grip placement, that in my opinion, um, and by evidence, has the, the highest success rate. Um, and if we can fit it into the hour, we are going through a couple of um, finishes that are not 100% or not that approach, but still work. Um, first conceptual, um, I need a new key. Choose you. Um, as, weird, as weird as it may sound, I want your back. Um, I think there's a couple of principles throughout jiu-jitsu that just repeat themselves. Um, one of them comes from chokes. For a rear naked choke, I want my choking arm as far around his neck and as close to his neck and behind his shoulder as possible. I want a hidden hand that he can't reach, or that he at least has a hard time reaching. What I also want is my arm connecting to both, uh, both sides of his neck and my grip to form a circle around his neck. So this is the ideal, this is what I want. Next thing is to, I believe to almost every choke, there's an element of rotation. That's oftentimes far easier for the gi guys to grab, uh, to grasp because you're used to rotating. No gi guys oftentimes just want to squeeze but there's an element to rotation of the rear naked choke, for example. So if I'm rotating my right elbow back over his shoulder, that makes for a far more powerful and for me far more easier to hold rear naked choke than just pulling into him. Um, and we're going to see exactly these principles in the guillotine. Um, that's maybe the part where I come to the first misconception of, of guillotines. Um, guillotines by nature are not a submission from guard, especially not from a close guard. I see, still see people trying things like that. That doesn't work. Uh, it, let's say it's not high percentage on people who know what they're doing. The precursor I want is the bottom of my armpit higher than the crown of his head. I want my shoulder to be higher than his head. I never want to reach and expose my shoulder to get onto, into a guillotine. Um, that being said, we'll start from a front headlock. I'm not going to go to, through too much of the front headlock. Just place your grip in the following order. Grab a the, grab the chin strap, make the ball of your thumb connect to his chin, wrap your fingers around the jaw, pinch your elbow in. Don't let the, let the back of his head see the ceiling. I don't want him peeking out there. You can't do that to people who know how to wrestle. I want it in, and I want a connection to this elbow. There's a couple of ways I can put my hands. I can put it on the inside, on the outside. Um, I can connect my, my grip in front here. Um, I like to do it from this position. Also make sure that the point of your shoulder finds, uh, you don't have a, you cut it out, find, finds the back of this, the, the, um, the label of the shirt here. There's, usually there's a label in the shirt, and I want my shoulder to be on there, on that label. I don't want it to be up on the shoulder, and I don't want it to be on the crown of the head. So, from here on, what we're going to do is, and I'm uh, using the Dana term terminology here, is a center line shift. So the head of my head will shift from this side of the center line to the other side of the center line. I go over here. What that, that gives me is the opportunity to bring my hand up until here, so that my knuckles have a clear line over his shoulder. The second hand doesn't have a job now. It, it's getting a job later, but we won't use that yet. The only thing I want you to do now is, if you find that, circle around to the side your hand is on. So now this knee is down, this knee is up. I will keep that and just circle around. And also I will lay on top of the shoulders. And my hand stays here where it is. It doesn't slip. Stays here, and I go around. 
That's all I want you to do. Start in the front headlock, and it's, it's laid into the week. So um, just recognize that in the, in the front headlock, I basically don't want my knees on the back. I always want to gear through. Um, as we're being nice, it's Thursday, and we're all a bit sore and tired. It's okay to keep the knee on the mat. Just make sure you understand that this, this is a mistake and make no purpose to be nice to your partner. So from here, if you can put your elbows on the mat or the hands on the mat, I don't care. We shift the center line, bring the hand up, make sure it stays here, and circle around. This hand has nothing to do now. I'm laying on top of the shoulder here. That's all we're going to do. Grab a partner, do it on both sides. Make sure that finding that entry gets more and more fluid. Okay? Go! <laughs> Um, about the leg work, I wasn't very specific about the leg work because the, the grip was um, was more important to me in the first place. But as I do my center line shift and my knuckles come up, I will keep my leg constellation. The standing leg will step, the other leg will windshield wiper and slide. I, I can take a, uh, a bit of momentum here, step around. Slide and which one. See how my foot is here next to his knee, and my knee is on the sit. This is something you, you should recognize. Um, so as soon as your foot is next to the knee, and your knee has contact with the hip, you're there. Um, I'm leaning over the shoulder. I try to stay upright and, and hold myself my own weight. This might put a bit of a strain my, on my shoulder. But it, as I'm laying my weight on top of his shoulders, I'm fine. This for the first place. I will only use this hand to choke. Um, and this is probably not the version of the guillotine you want to do first. I do it a lot, I like it a lot, but it's just there to emphasize that I really don't need that second arm to finish. The job of the second arm is just to secure this high risk position. I don't need the second arm to finish. That means, as soon as I get here, and I circle around. Now we're giving this hand just a job of control, and not even my hand here. Just gonna grab this lap. Gonna grab underneath the armpit here. The key problem in guillotines is people spinning out. Um, that leads to the conclusion that this leg is far more important than the bottom one. So what I wanna do first is bring the top leg in. I'm aiming for the side of this hip bone here. There's this hip bone. And this is one of what I want to find with my heel. Um, I'm not super flexible, but I don't have problems just putting it in here. If you have, give him a bit more of your weight and let, let the bottom leg help you rise. This should be sufficient to get here. I back heel and draw him in. I don't even have to fall. Just for experimenting, the only thing I will do is bring my choking elbow down to my hip. I will rotate that in. That's my tap. I didn't crunch, I didn't pull, I didn't jack into it. All I did was that. This is the only motion you'll need to finish gear teams as soon as you have the high risk position. It's more. From a front headlock, I will shift the knee off. Keep you, make sure it stays there. Now I bring my hip around. Foot is by the knee, knees by the hip. I grab here, throw it over, over on the other side, rotate my elbow. That's it for now, and we're going to build from there. <coughs> okay? Anyone want to see it again? You're just grabbing the last from the first side. I do it on the other side. Center line shift, hand is high, go around, just catch here. That's Okay? Go! Still, that was all precursor. Um, it's 
totally viable to finish a gear team with that hand constellation. Um, I do it a lot just because I can put my hand in different places to grip fight. Um, but we will have to drop for the finish because our opponent is, most of the time our opponent is resistant and um, being on my side gives me way more of a leverage to put in there. Um, can I grab you? So again, we're still using our hands in the same way. We have him uh, on his hands or elbows. Elbows is a bit easier. High wrist. My hand has a free line over his back. I will step in windshield wiper. Keep, keep being attached here. Throw my leg over. I can get, I'm not even squeezing on his hands or hitting on that. Um, as soon as I bring my elbow in towards my hip, I get the tap. I release a bit just for him. Um, what I will do now is shoot my bottom knee underneath him. I don't want to pull him on top of me and I will make sure that I end up on my left side. So my shoulder and my left hip will go towards the mat. I don't want my shoulder on the mat because I don't want to see his neck. So as I'm dropping in here, my, you can't, from, if you were here, you don't need to, you can't, you can't see his neck. I'm gonna turn for the next one. And still, I'm just gonna keep this here Keep this, sorry, <laughs> keep, keep this foot and just bring, bring my elbow to my, um, to my hip and my hat says, stays over his head. That's it. It's a tiny finish, it doesn't cost me any strength. I'm not pulling, I'm not ripping, I'm just rotating into the choke. Um, and the good thing is, that's my core working so I can, even if he was crazy strong and had the biggest neck ever or the smallest, Whatever, whatever causes my problems, I can just keep, I can keep this forever. This I can. This is pretty easy for me to keep. One more time, just from another angle. From the front headlock, we do a center and shift, get our higher wrist, reach across, and turn. Bring this leg over first, drop into it, and bring the elbow, see how this hip is off the mat. My head is higher than his, I stay attached to his back and bring the elbow towards the hip. And that's it. Um, make sure you don't fall flat on your back and you can't see any skin on his neck. Your shoulder should cover the neck up until there's a shirt. If you see skin, get up again, reattach and make sure you stay there. And your head stays higher than his head. As soon as your head goes down, the shoulder goes down too. Okay? One more time. <laughs> That's the best angle, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. From my front head. I shift, bring my hand through. Make the turn. Put my weight on top of you. My hand is secured by my chest. From here, I will bring my foot over. Bring my knee in. And bring my elbow, my head aside from this. I don't see his neck. Bring the elbow. There's not a lot of squeeze, it's just a mild shrug downward. Connecting my elbow to the hip. And that's it. If you have to really apply force into it, or if it's somewhat uh, straining, you're doing something wrong, call me in. Okay? Good. For the, for the person getting choked, please uh, make sure that you're good, okay, and doing doing things like you kind of like you would uh, in a roll. Uh, what oftentimes happens is as soon as you do through all the motions, yeah, get around. So as soon as he drops, now bring a foot over. Some people tend to drop, do that, and go belly up. This makes things way worse for me. Because if he just get, keeps on going, my head goes backwards, it, and I force him to do a guillotine from the back, and that really sucks. So make sure you stay with your chest towards the mat. Um, it sometimes happens when you, when you practice uh, that first, but that's only because the uke is kind of sleeping on it. Um, that probably wouldn't happen to you in a real roll, um, so please Make, it doesn't matter for the finish of the guillotine. People can do that. I'm, I'm okay with pulling them backwards. It just really sucks for your spine. <laughs>
on your neck. So don't do that to yourself. Okay? Go. Keep on. Um, again, similarities to the rear Nike choke. Uh, can I use you? Don't try and finish it with, with one squeeze. Um, especially on people who are a bit more experienced, I, I would just give you one, one squeeze. Don't tap. <laughs> <laughs> so 100% for two seconds is not sufficient. But 20% for infinite amounts of time, sooner or later, that's enough. And it's easy for me to just keep on the pressure and talk to you while I'm submitting. Uh, this was an extreme example. I can hold 50% long enough to make him tap. Um, so don't try and finish it in the first second. But if you're holding on to it without increasing the pressure, not cranking, if you're just constantly holding on to it and you think it's right, and after, five, after three to four seconds nothing happened, ask your partner and readjust. Then there might be something wrong. Um, just don't fall into the temptation of giving it your all and your partner just toughening it out and waiting for you to gas out. That's what happens a lot with guillotines. That what, that's what you always hear the commentary on MMA fights saying. He's gassing himself out with that guillotine. Um, that, that's what happens if you put it all in there. Um, hand constellations. As I said, and as you now all know, this hand is not needed for the finish. The only job this hand has is build up control. On this example, I was building up control over rotation of the upper body. Um, if you have a good high, if you have a good high risk, and he's not really grip fighting, or he lost the grip fight, it's okay to do that. But just for security's sake, the uh, most common job for the second hand is securing your actual high risk. So the only job this hand has is to make sure that what I earn here, I will keep. This will help bring the, my wrist closer to his artery on this side but it's not for the finish itself. So now what we're doing is what I think is the strongest kind of guillotine with the highest finishing percentage. I will just grab my own wrist with my uh, middle finger over my pulse and on this hand, on the choking hand, I will push my wrist into him. So like I'm checking my watch but a bit sideways. I will do that and this will bring my wrist closer to his neck. So you would see me bending my hand this way and pulling it in. I'm very tight on the neck here. I will go around, my elbow stays up over his shoulder. As soon as I turn, before I drop, before I bring my leg over, I will just bring my elbow over the, uh, over the back, over this shoulder. This will help keep, it, keep the shoulder down. Again, same finish. And um, more than just keeping my, myself up and my head up, I will also push my elbow into his back. So, I drop in, push my elbow into his back. Uh, that's the high mobility. It's even stronger because the, there's a whole frame around his neck and it inhibits movement. But the finish is the, basically is the same. I will bring my elbow to my uh, hip and push <coughs> my other elbow in. This is a double motion. If you have trouble with your wrists, for some people this is hard to do, you can Take a palm to palm grip, that's easier for some people. If that's hard for you, you can take an ass grip. Um, and if that's hard for you, just do another kind of guillotine. Okay, so, send an shift, high wrist. Secure your work, bring your wrist in, get around. My elbow is higher than the shoulder. From here, hook in. And there should be it. Hi, Abel. You're the guy in Marcelo Garcia shirt. I want to see a high Abel guillotine from you. <laughs> Go! Okay, um, the last thing we are going to do on this, on this basic setup um, is talk about the different ways my partner can react and the different um, positions that forces onto my secondary arm. Um, after that, we're gonna go through, depending on the time, 
uh, one or two positions where I like to do a guillotine um, and where I don't have an initial high risk. Whenever my shoulder is higher than the top of my partner's head, I should be able to get a high risk. And as soon as there's a high risk, that, that, that is a safe sign for you to go to your guillotine. Um, oftentimes on beginners or on people who start working with guillotines, they don't really know when to go in on it and when not. Because the problem is, if it fails and I lose control of the head, I gave up top position. Um, having a high risk, a secured high risk, either by your chest or by your hand, that's a good indicator for you to go for the guillotine. Um, and in the beginning especially, if you're not that good at adjusting it to a high risk yet, don't go for the guillotine or don't, don't drop into it as long as you don't have a high risk. Make it a back tech um, or let your partner roll take him out. But um, as soon as you have a high risk and this is secured, you should be able to go for guillotine. Otherwise, go back and work on your leg control or work on controlling the grip. Um, and the high risk basically shouldn't be lost. If you lose the high grip, again, go back to the drawing board, work on it. But this should be your indicator to go for the guillotine. And you shouldn't give up top position but get a submission there. Um, who didn't I use yet? You. So there's different ways my partner can defend. As soon as I have the high risk. As soon as I'm here, this arm is what can cause me trouble. The first thing, grip fighting is not a very good option at this point. Uh, he, he can do that and it's, it's a viable option, but it's hard to do because my hand is already behind his neck. And that, doesn't, that basically doesn't help a lot. Um, but what people will do is mess with this arm. So either if I want to go for my high, higher bogey team, he anticipates and hugs my, um, my shoulder. Yeah, reach, reach around my, to my back. Reach around all the way, so I'm not getting a I'm not getting a high elbow. But basically, that's not much of a problem. I will do the same turn. I will do do the same drop and just do a low elbow guillotine. The finish is the same. I will bring my elbow to my hip. And I'm finishing on my way down already. Again, as soon as I get my high wrist, I secure my work. He knows I like high elbow guillotines, so he, yeah, he reaches around and secures that. I still have a high wrist. I'm still high on his, on his neck. I will go around the same way. Drop in the same way. My elbow stays by my hip. And I'll bring the other one to my hip too. So instead of being here, instead of being here and dropping this in, I'm here and I'm still doing the same thing. Once more. Uh, different angle probably. I do both sides. Okay. I shift, bring my hand, secure my work. I love high elbow guillotines, but as I'm cornering, he's not giving me that. This, if you really hug it, yeah, I won't get this. Out. Still. There's almost no difference in the finish. Up the side. I'm here. Come around, he's not giving me the high elbow. Oh. Still attaching, dropping it. Elbow to the hip. That's one. Um, depending on skill level, just pre practice that, or in, with a view on the time. Um, just to kind of make absolutely clear that this leads you into any kind of guillotine. This also helps me getting into an arm mid. Um, the scenario for the arm mid guillotine is that as soon as I have my high risk, he's now reaching around my waist yeah, to stop me from coming around. I still have a high risk. I could go for one arm finish, but I can as well just reach around the arm and with a C post like that, find my own wrist. Just do that. I put my, my wrist in between my thumb and my hand. Back. You reach around my waist before I can get my grip. It's hard to get a grip here now. I don't reach my wrist. So I'm just going around underneath this armpit, finding my own wrist, and I'm doing the exact same thing. Cornering, pulling the neck over, dropping back. Nice. Any difference between the finishes? Not really, they all suck. Yeah. <laughs> the finishes are all the same. There's no different mechanic to any of them. As soon as you have a high wrist, just find a way to secure your, your own wrist. Secure your own high wrist, and drop into it. 
Okay. Anyone want to see it again? Good. See it then. Uh, sure. You go practice. I'll show you on your training part. All right. Go. <laughs> Imagine you're wearing a watch and you want to put the, a fingerprint on the, of your thumb onto your watch. Imagine putting your thumb on your watch. I see people doing that. It's not as sound as that. This gives you, gives you more control over your wrist, keeps it higher than this grip. This is a bit weaker. So, thumbprint onto your watch. Think of that when you do the arm and guillotine. When you reach around, Thumbprint your watch. Go! I don't want any locals to get mad with me, so um, it didn't come to teach everything I wanted to teach, but um, at least staying two more minutes for some final words. Um, if you're having trouble with finishing the guillotine, look out for the signs of why it fails. First, maybe your setup is from guard. That's not a good setup in the beginning. I do a lot of guillotines from guard positions, especially from, uh, from scrambles, me escaping and the other guy dropping in on my hip to get control. And what happens when he drops in on my hips when I'm in guard? Suddenly my shoulder is higher than his head. Then I can go for guillotines. That's totally viable. Um, it's just way easier, in, in, in uh, my opinion, to start working that from a front headlock like position. That's why guillotines are both great for and against wrestlers. Guillotines are more closely tied to wrestling than to guard work. Um, and they're easier to run in that context. The second thing is, if you did everything right but you're not getting a finish, or you're losing your grip on the way, you are probably sleeping on your high wrist. It's way easier and way more secure to go for a high wrist. Another parallel to the rear naked. Um, give me your back. This is where I want my rear naked to, to be to finish it. Of course I can if I'm, if I'm stronger or maybe he's sleeping on the, defense, on the defense. I cannot be as far in and still finish my rear naked here. My wrist is not behind his back. My, my hand is not even behind his back. I can't finish a rear naked here. It's just not as good. Uh, what that means is I can finish a guillotine thank you, without a high risk, but it will always be less work for me and way more urgent for him if I get a high risk. If you have a grip and you are in a guillotine, make, you can even with a grip make sure to adjust it into a high risk. And don't fall into the temptation of doing all the finishing with your secondary hand. Um, kind of the old school way is this hand helping to just lever up into his neck and your shoulder pushing down. That's way too many movements that in itself aren't very strong and not very sustainable. Just make sure the secondary hand has the job of helping you into the high wrist, then securing it. And the finish is a crunch. It's crunching, an oblique crunch, bringing your elbow to your hip. The elbow hip connection is one of the strongest you can make. That's why people like to wrestle like that. Or everything Preet does is elbows and hips. And that's why it's so hard to attack Preet. In partly. Yeah? Um, try looking out for that. Um, and other than that, I didn't introduce myself in the beginning, but as we're filming, I'm doing that now. For those of you who didn't know me before, um, I'm Sven from Cologne, Germany. I'm head coach and co owner of Game Theory Jiu Jitsu. Um, and I'm the grappling coach of Cage MMA in Cologne. And whenever you're passing through Cologne, just give me a heads up, come in to train with me. Um, and for the two days that are left, if you have questions, either on that class or on my Kimura class from uh, Tuesday, find me, ask me, I'll gladly answer questions. Um, I wish we could have had five more minutes, but there are kids wanting to fight. So, thank you. We're taking pictures.